In this tutorial, we are going to add simple multi-track sound to a video. We are using Sony Vegas, but the techniques apply whatever software you prefer to use. You are currently watching a two-minute video that was taken in Southampton, England in 2008 on board the Queen Mary II when three Cunard ships were all in the port at the same time. It was the last time that Queen Mary II would meet the QE2 in Southampton, so it was a special occasion with an emotional atmosphere that we wished to recreate in the video. Step one then is to edit and run the video using just the live audio recorded by the camcorder at the time. This will help identify key and ambient sounds that perhaps we can use in the final video. We have seen the shape of the finished video and so can now prepare the schedule of key sounds. We have a long shot of Queen Mary 2 across the river and also need some dockside sound. On the ship itself there are people around us on the bridge deck for the whole of the film. As the ship slips her mooring, the rope splashing in the water is a key sound. This is followed by the bow thrusters and a ship's whistle. We have the sound of people cheering whilst at the same time Queen Mary II whistles her salute with the QE2 acknowledging, perhaps the most important audio. Kinard played music as Queen Mary II turned in the basin, but the live music did not record well. Lastly, we tell the story with a voiceover. Ten key sounds to edit and add to the video. First of all, we will mute and collapse the original audio as we intend to totally replace it. We will use this track for our background or ambient sound. We have some sound that we recorded on deck which we can use for the dock side and then a longer recording we made whilst on the bridge of the QM2 which we can use to provide the general people noise. The object of using this continuous unobtrusive sound is to smooth the cuts in the image and we'll look at a short sequence and you can judge how effective this is. We are going to add four effects. Firstly, a seagull. This should add to the atmosphere of being by the sea. We need to highlight the ship being cast off from the quay, and so the splash of the mooring rope hitting the water is a prime sound. This sound must be synchronised with the clip. To achieve this, we line up the scrub bar with the image of the rope when it hits the water. We slide the audio clip to a position where the peak of the waveform, which is the sound of the impact, aligns with the bar. A sound check is needed at this point and, if necessary, adjustments can easily be made. The sound of water being churned up by the ship's bow thrusters follows straight on, together with the ship's whistle, and we recovered both of these from the original video recordings. The 
most emotive sound you can hear on a ship is the whistle or hooter. Even more so when, as in this case, two liners talk to each other. It took over a minute for the ships to complete their exchanges. In edit, we reduced the video sequence to just 23 seconds, so we have some changes to make. Each ship sounds three blasts. Each blast starts from nothing, builds and holds, then fades at the end. It's easy to reduce the playback time by cutting a slice from the middle section of each blast where the sound is constant and then using a crossover fade to disguise the join. That sounded fine and we repeat the exercise with the remaining sounds. With the edit complete, the audio clips are placed on the timeline to check that the new length fits with the visuals. We also need one blast from each ship later, so we use copy and paste then shorten the clip to one whistle blast and place it on the timeline. Now we create another track, this time for people cheering. Here the problem is different. The audio clip is too short. We need around 23 seconds of cheering, but our audio lasts for just four. The solution is our old friend copy and paste. We paste nine copies of this clip onto a blank section of the timeline, then merge them together using crossover fades. The sound of people cheering is not constant, so this technique should work reasonably well. Like the whistles, we need cheering later in the video, so again, we copy and paste to the second insert point and cut to length. As Queen Mary II sailed close to the QE2, Elgar's stirring Land of Hope and Glory was played over the ship's public address system, and it's important to include this. Unfortunately, our live recording was very poor quality and disjointed, and so we are using a royalty-free recording for this video. We want the correct phrasing as Queen Mary II turns round in the basin, and so placement is critical. The remaining recording is too long, so we have to make a join, which is not easy with something so well known. The technique we use is to disguise the join using the ship's whistle and the sound of people cheering as cover. We cut the first half just as the cheering ends, then place the end of the music slightly after the end of the video. Cut both at a central point where the cheering and whistles are making the most noise and, if I hadn't told you, you would never have known.
With the voiceover yet to be installed, it's time to check out the soundtrack for the combined sound. The human brain finds it very difficult to separate several sounds coming from one source. And we can help provide more focus by separating these sounds. In this case, the whistles from stereo to mono. Now we use the pan facility to separate the two sounds between the left and right speakers. We do this by inserting key frames, then dragging the ship's whistles to the right speaker in the first instance and to the left on the second. We do the reverse with the cheering. We now have a lot of sounds demanding attention and we use the mixing process to address this. First, set the volume of the prime sounds we identified earlier as high as the system will comfortably take without distortion. Now, set the levels of the subordinate tracks so that they do not overpower the prime sounds. Once the mix sounds right, we render the video. Rendering allows us to adjust the overall sound level without altering the integrity of the mix. This will be important when we apply our voiceover. With all other sound now combined onto one track, we can import the pre-recorded voiceover and place it on a second track. If the script is well written, there will be silent breaks that can be used to adjust the timing by simply a cut and slide. The voiceover now becomes the prime sound. And, once the timing is right, you subordinate the combined track to it. We use the keyframes to adjust the background track either side of the voiceover. Cunard's Queen Mary 2 is preparing to embark on a scheduled transatlantic crossing. It's a special day today, as it's the last time she will be in Southampton with the world famous liner, Queen Elizabeth II, who will be retired later in this year after 39 years service with Cunard. Having slipped our moorings and free from the land, we move upstream towards the other two Cunardas who are in port today. First, we pass Queen Victoria, the newest of the three Cunard queens, who is also here to say goodbye to QE2. Our captain initiates the exchange of whistles that form the traditional salute when two liners meet. in the basin to pass the QE2 for the last time, 
the strains of land of hope and glory come over the ship's tannoy, and it's all very emotional. Because QE2 is in dock for maintenance, there are only a few crew members on board to return our cheers. We have a final opportunity to say goodbye to a dear old friend. <laughs>